During the final stretch of World War II, in February of 1945, the conference at Yalta took place. The Allied leaders were planning the end of World War II as they hoped to overcome Nazi Germany led by Adolf Hitler. On May 8, 1945, the German soldiers laid down their arms. Right after the war in 1945, Russia was pushed into a reluctant agreement with the Allies called the Potsdam Agreement. There were several conferences that took place in Potsdam. Notable leaders were U.S. President Harry Truman, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Winston Churchill, and Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin. This conference would determine the future of Germany. The three leaders decided on specifics about splitting Germany up amongst themselves. The Soviet Union controlled the eastern part of Germany, while the United States, the United Kingdom, and France controlled the western part. Although Berlin was in the middle of the Soviet sector of Germany, each nation in the agreement had a piece of the city. The nations involved in this agreement never thought it would be much more than a temporary fix. They planned that a German government would take power after some recovery and rebuilding from war damage. However, this solution lasted for decades. In 1947, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States decided to merge all of their sectors into one. All of these combined sectors were called West Germany. Additionally, Western countries merged their territories in Berlin into one entity known as West Berlin. The Soviet section was known as East Berlin. With the borders merging, traveling between East and West Germany became more strict. A permit called the Interzone Pass was necessary to cross the border. This Interzone Pass was valid for 30 days. On June 24th, 1948, the Soviet Union decided that they would prevent West Germans and supplies from traveling to West Berlin. This was known as the Berlin Blockade. The next day, the three Western countries responded to the blockade with an airlift to supply the West Berliners with necessities. The Allies used narrow flight paths to bring supplies into West Berlin. At its peak, planes would take off every 30 seconds delivering nearly 2.3 million tons of cargo over the entire operation. The New York Treaty on May 4, 1949 allowed roads and rails to be opened again. Between 1949 and 1961, nearly 3 million people fled East Germany for West Germany. The Soviets did not want to lose valuable members of the workforce, so they closed the borders of the Eastern Bloc nations, which were the communist states controlled by Russia. This area of enforced isolation became known as the Iron Curtain. West Berlin was the only gap in the Iron Curtain. Unlike the border between East and West Germany, there was nothing to stop people from leaving East Berlin and defecting to West Berlin. On the night of August 12th into August 13th, 1961, the borders between East and West Berlin were closed by the order of Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. East German soldiers guarded the border while construction of the wall began at 1 a.m. The wall was really more of a fence at this point, being that it only consisted of barbed wire. With the assistance of the East German army, police forces, and various volunteers, the preliminary Berlin Wall was constructed in just two weeks. It is important to note that the Berlin Wall was not just a wall between East and West Berlin, it surrounded West Berlin in its entirety. The official reason that East Germany said it built the wall was to keep Western fascists from entering East Germany. In fact, the official name East Germany gave to the wall was the anti-fascist protection rampart. The German citizens were irate when they learned what had happened. Many East Germans ran through the gaps in the preliminary fence. Some East German soldiers defected too. During the wall's existence, people were not able to move freely from East to West Berlin. However, there were three checkpoints. They were called Checkpoint Alpha, Checkpoint Bravo, and Checkpoint Charlie. If diplomats were seeking authorization 
to travel to the other side of the wall, they would be evaluated by border guards at one of these three checkpoints. It was difficult for anyone to cross, including diplomats. As tensions mounted, the United States and Soviets tried each other's resolve. United States General Lucius Clay attempted to intimidate the Soviets by placing 10 M48 tanks at the scene. The Soviets responded with 36 tanks. After 16 hours of deadlock, John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, contacted Nikita Khrushchev and both sides withdrew their tanks. A second, more advanced wall was built in June of 1962. This wall was improved during the following years. The second generation was then replaced by a third generation, which began construction in 1965. This generation of the wall was comprised of concrete slabs between steel girders and watchtowers every several hundred yards. The wall ranged from 11 to 13 feet high. Behind the outer wall, there was an elaborate defense system known as the Death Strip. To start, there was raked sand, so footprints could not be concealed from the guards. Ferocious dogs could be unleashed and potentially kill their victim. If not dogs, the East German guards were under the order to shoot and kill anyone attempting to cross illegally. At the first East German border, that's the first time in my life I'd ever had a gun pointed at me. There were armed guards and they actually pointed the gun at you, told you get out of the car. The concrete portion of the wall had a length of 66 miles and an average height of 11.8 feet. The wire mesh fencing totaled a length of 41 miles. There were 65 miles of anti-vehicle trenches, as well as 302 watchtowers and 20 bunkers. As the wall expanded, East Berliners began peaceful protests. Churches were used as a place where people could reflect and express their anger. The wall almost completely stopped the flow of emigration. The wall also reduced the amount of tension between the countries. President Kennedy was not satisfied with the circumstances. There were many attempts to cross the wall, resulting in approximately 171 deaths. However, escaping to West Berlin was not entirely impossible. From 1961 to 1989, 5,000 East Germans were able to flee. People were able to jump out of apartment windows that were directly next to the wall. Other escapes included crawling through sewers and driving cars and trucks through the wall. People wanted out of East Germany. It was a repressive, cruel, violent regime where people had no freedom. During a press conference on November 9th, 1989, East German Politburo member Gunter Schabowski was announcing a new policy that would allow citizens to cross the border. When asked at one point the policy would take effect, he said, Immediately, without delay. The East Germans did not intend for this information to be released until the following day, and even then, a lengthy application process was still to be required. Germans congregated at the wall in good spirits, drinking wine and champagne to celebrate their victory. People used tools such as hammers to break pieces off the wall. These people were known as the wall woodpeckers. Bulldozers also helped tear down the wall. On October 3rd, 1990, East and West Germany were reunited as one nation. I never believed that it would come down in my lifetime. I was astonished that they actually tore it down because they had gone to such lengths to defend it and you know, to keep people in. The destruction of the wall was very significant in subsequent years. Germany has developed into a democracy, and people can travel freely through the entire nation.